Hello, Cleaning Nation. Today we have a really special guest in my uh, new international friend, Shamim Rajani. And it, yes, it took me a lot of many rep repetitions of the ability to say that right. And I'm probably still uh, still getting it almost half right. Uh, but Shamim started her company, Genetech, 13 years ago uh, and has grown in Pakistan, has grown to more than 50 employees as a female in Pakistan. These, uh, these folks do all sorts of web development, website applications, graphic design, uh, anything technical. I shouldn't say any, but almost everything technical on the web. They can uh, even integrate landing page software like ClickFunnels, which is what I use with auto uh, email autoresponders like Aweber or MailChimp. So basically all the funnel stuff that we teach, uh, Shamim and her team can help you actually implement if you are like me and don't want to figure out how to do that on your own. Uh, so I asked her to be on the show because her company actually just finished our logo and website redesign and we absolutely love it. I've uh, worked with many, many, many uh, overseas vendors and the uh, Shamim's the first one I've invited on the show because she's the first one that has just done uh, a great job. Uh, we had very little bumps on the road, and we did. She was able to take care of it. Uh, so I wanted to introduce you to her uh, and uh, have that same opportunity. So if you go to growmycleaningcompany.com, you'll be able to see her latest handiwork with us. If you want to get a hold of Shamim and her team, you can get them at Genetech, G-E-N-E-T-E-C-H. It's like Gene Tech if you're spelling it, G-E-N. Uh, e tech solutions.com or Shamim has actually been kind enough to give uh, me her email address to give to you guys so you can get a hold of her directly and that's Shamim S H A M I M Shamim dot Rajani R A J A N I Shamim dot Rajani at Genentech or not Genentech Genentech yeah not Genentech Genentech you're killing me over there Shamim not only is her name hard for her her personal name which is fine because it's a different culture but she had to pick a name for a website that's killing me as well Genentech Solutions if you want to get a hold of them it's Genentech Solutions dot com or Shamim dot Rajani at Genentech Solutions enough of me. Uh, uh, making a mess of the English language. <laughs> Shamim, welcome to the show, sister. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, I'm really happy to be here and you know, to be talking to your audience. Yeah, glad to have you. Um, and again, the reason I'm having you on is for a couple of reasons. One, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching our live events. Uh, we try to get stuff done, right? As opposed to just talking about things, uh, we want to get it done. And when we first started at the live events, we were trying to teach everybody or give everybody the tools to do uh, uh, all the funnels, right? So there's a couple main funnels that you need, client attraction and employee attraction, right? And you want to take them through the funnel of I barely know you to I know you a little bit to now I like and trust you to now I want to come in for an interview or have you do a bid to you know, a whole funnel that's automated to get people to go from strangers effectively to employees or customers. Uh, Absolutely. So that's great, and we have all the tech, we have all the the kind of feedback on how to do that in terms of copy and, and what what page to put when and all that sort of stuff. And everybody seemed to get that and wasn't really having a big problem with it. And that's great. The problem came in when I said, okay, now set up your ClickFunnels account, set up your Aweber account. If you actually want to do a full website, let's do it in WordPress. Set up all this stuff, and their eyes just glazed that they were done. And <laughs> it was just done, 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 done. Uh, and there was two problems. One, either they had to do it, which they just weren't able, or two, it would be thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and the website that we did, just so you look at it, was a couple thousand dollars, but probably half what it might have done if we did in the States. Uh, or they have to, they'd have to pay someone, like, I can't afford that. So um, Shamim has been the only kind of tool I found that A, does what they say they're going to do, uh, and B, did it at a price that I could afford and most of Cleaning Nation could afford. So anyway, that's why you're here, Shamim. Tell us about, um, first of all, I, I'm dying to hear your story of, you are, I'll just admit it, the one Pakistani woman that owns the company of 50 employees that I've ever met. So I would love to, I'm sure the audience would love to hear that story. Talk to us. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, Pakistan is uh, is quite a, quite a, um, most of Pakistan is basically agricultural, but uh, a big part of Pakistan is also uh, doing a lot of work in IT. And uh, um, so women recently, for the last two years, women have been coming into IT. But when I started 13 years ago, there were very few women in, in the IT. So it took me uh, some you know, effort, some courage to get in there. But uh, then uh, there was also this opening for me as a woman uh, to step in and uh, do what I wanted. So we basically started training in web development. Web was really new in Pakistan at that time. And I really like to do new stuff. So I just started picking up web development and then went on to doing open source solutions like more WordPress and stuff like that and click funnel for marketing. Then we went on to mobile applications and right now we're doing blockchain. So blockchain is the newest uh, around the corner and that's what we're basically learning and getting into. So I really like to experiment with new stuff. Um, it's been hard. Uh, 
in uh, staying in being in Pakistan as a woman, but it's not, uh, you know, nothing is uh, that difficult. I mean, if you put your heart to it, you can really break through it. And I have, and right now, the, the air in Pakistan is pretty um, modern, it's pretty women friendly. Uh, girls and women are constantly coming into uh, the sector and uh, we're, we're having a good, um, you know, uh, ratio of male versus uh, female into the IT sector. So that's good. Uh, but uh, uh, me and a couple of other women, we're like pioneers in Pakistan. So yeah, when people come and see me, like I have uh, somebody coming in tomorrow and they, when, when they see me sitting on the CEO's chair, I'm, they, for a second they'll jump and then they'll sit down and they'll say, okay, you know, we get it. But uh, yeah, so that's fun. But, and, um, uh, but that, that's it, that's how it is. But it's, it's been a, a roller coaster ride. And, but it's a lot of, it has been a lot of fun and a lot of learning for me. So the, the bulk of why well, I should imagine all of our audience here is either a business owner or someone starting a business and, you know, just growing a business to 50 employees in the States, that's, that would certainly be a, a multi-million dollar business. I'm assuming it is there. Uh, give us, uh, and I'm assuming that's a cool thing about entrepreneurship. And one of the things I love about it, it's a, it's there, there knows no boundaries, right? Uh, capitalism is capitalism. I'm, I, I use you, the fact that you're a female in Pakistan, I think that's super cool. But I don't care. You did a better job than anyone else that I could find. You know, that's all I care about. And I love that um, capitalism. That that's how it works. So, that said, tell us a little bit about uh, aside from just being a, a female in Pakistan, just growing a company over the last thirteen years from zero to fifty employees. Any uh, feedback for our audience who are also trying to grow empl- uh, businesses uh, on on what works, what doesn't work? Yeah. So uh, w- the way I I grew business, I'm 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 a I'm a risk taker. And businesses don't don't grow without taking risks. That's that's the first thing. But uh, I'm also a, a very entrepreneurial sort sort of a person. So I take small risks. I don't take I don't take big leaps, big jumps, and I'm I, I'm, I don't play too safe. So I I take risks. I take small risks. So that's me, one of the things. That give me an example of what you would consider a small risk that you would take versus a big risk, and it can be made up. Just so I get we we as an audience get an idea. What a big risk that you would say that's that would be too much for me. So um, um, I don't know. In my industry, I would say, for example, um, for example. So right now I'm doing blockchain, right? So, uh, so before jumping my, uh, you know, guns over it, and you know, getting a tree team because blockchain is so much around the corner. Okay, and just, so you know, back, back you keep saying you keep saying interesting stuff. So that I ask you one question, then I'm like, now I need another question. So first, what again? I'm, I have no clue on God's green earth what blockchain is. So I'm guessing half the audience is kind of like me going, "What are we talking about?" Bitcoins, you guys know Bitcoins, right? Yep, Bitcoin, so, I understand. Bitcoins, yeah. So uh, the, the technology that, that built Bitcoins is called blockchain. Okay? So blockchain is very, very, uh, uh, not just lucrative, it's very challenging, it's very new, it's very uh, risky, but it's also, um, uh, like I said, very lucrative. Okay? So that's something that I've been uh, reading about for the last one year. And uh, so... You know, before jumping, you know, getting a team, tra- taking 10, 10 people, impl- you know, training them in blockchain, what I did is I, I, I took a small risk. I took a course and I went myself and did that course, found out, found out what the market was like, found out what the openings were like for uh, a development team or, you know, working in blockchain because that's what I do. I basically give you services. I don't do products. So I, I give services. So I was looking at what kind of market there is. When I saw there was a market, I came home, I hired, uh, so I, I trained, did not hire, you can't hire because you can't find. I trained two of my developers in blockchain okay. and then started taking up projects and then slowly and gradually will add to that. So that's what I mean by I did take the risk. I didn't say why should I because blockchain is not just lucrative, but it's also you don't know if it's out there, how long it's, you know, like it's like Bitcoin. You don't know how long Bitcoin is out sure. there. It might be, it might just, you know, blow up. It might just disappear so there's a risk so i took that risk but i didn't go in on and made a team of 10 i started with one and then i'm going to add one more and then i'm going so that's what i mean when i say take small risks and then but uh, going up the ladder slowly so, so small, when i started so a small risk would be um investing the time and money in yourself to 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 better your education so in terms that's, of this thing. that's very a important that's big risk would have taken 20 percent of your team for this new thing and say we're going this direction is that a fair Absolutely. And where did you get the training? Is it is was it Pakistan, Europe, the States? Where'd you no, go? No, I was. I, so I came to San Francisco. Um, have you heard of Draper University, San Francisco? Draper in University. Yeah, Draper University uh, in the Valley. Okay. It's in San Francisco. It's in uh, it's in San Mateo. 
So I came there for I have a, a brother-in-law in San Mateo right now. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, it's a, it was a five-day training program. Uh, I took it there. Um, I was one of the uh, uh, one of the only female from Pakistan program. Wait, one of the only? So there were other females from Pakistan no, in that no, program? No, 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 no. I, I was the only okay. female from Pakistan. But they were they were one of the few females that took the program. There were there were quite a few females actually, a lot a lot from China actually. But uh, but I was the only from Pakistan. Not just female, I was the only person from Pakistan. Okay. Actually, <laughs> male or female. That's Let's what, be honest. That's <laughs> what got me confused. Uh, so, um, but uh, when I um, as soon as I took that program and I updated my uh, profile on LinkedIn. I started. I mean, I mean, even you know, the day after the program, I started getting calls um, on LinkedIn connections, and people wanted to talk to me. And ever since I've come back, um, uh, I've signed up an MOU with um, uh, you know a, an organization, a Canada-based organization, to train people in Pakistan on blockchain technology. Plus, uh, I've been invited to conferences to talk about it. So that's that's just the you know. Um, the side effect of it. The main thing is I learned something. I'm going to implement it on my team. I'm going to bring that uh, home. And, you know, uh, basically, we're going to start working on it uh, very soon, inshallah. So hold, hold on one second, because I want to make sure Cleaning Nation does it. You said something very important and profound. I don't want them to miss. So Shamim is an entrepreneur for the last decade or more just kind of blew over like, oh, yeah, I got training. And I'm like, hold on. Where did you get the training? San Francisco. Well, I've not flown direct from San Francisco to Pakistan, but that's not a $200 flight. That's a thousand or two thousand dollar flight i'm guessing um that's not uh, taking the afternoon off that that you said it was a four or five day course so this is at least seven days probably if i know shamim she probably stayed here a couple days and found some fun things to do before or after so that's at least a week or two out of her business i don't know what the course cost but i am guessing it wasn't 197 i'm guessing it was expensive no it was a ten thousand dollar course okay. so the the, the but, point but being a, a a female entrepreneur from pakistan I was given a huge discount. Wow, that, that is, is so one of generous. The, but yeah, but even so, good. let's even with the discount, I'm guessing it was still a $10,000 investment in terms of I'm out of my my business, that yeah. costs money. I've got a San Francisco <laughs> I is as great of a town as it is. I'm sure the hotels didn't say, "Oh, you're you're a female from Pakistan, half <laughs> you paid full price from that." Same with the airlines, same with the food. So it was easily a $10,000 plus investment plus a week or two over time. And I just love that you get that. So many people are like Ten thousand dollars for a truck mount, this or no, some that's, sort of that's piece. So see, that as an entrepreneur, that's the risk that you must take. Thirteen years into the business, I feel that was important. And, okay. And so, I love that you went back and you're training people in your business. So you're like, hey, I've got to do it first. And one of my favorite sayings that I've heard is when people, when we talk training, go, what if I invest in my people and um, they don't stay, they quit. And I always respond, well, what if you don't invest with your people in your people and they stay, right? Then that's even a bigger risk. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that exactly. Those are risks that in businesses, as an entrepreneur, you have to take. I mean, nobody's going to stay with you forever. So, you know, if somebody's staying with you five plus years, you're lucky. You're very lucky, especially in the in the tech industry. I mean, three years is the limit. <laughs> tech yeah, industry, we'll sister, we got janitors. We're, we're happy if they stay three months. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going crazy. Three years, we'd be jumping up and down. That'd be fantastic. Um, all right. So first of all, thank you for sharing that kind of step by step. Hey, I'm willing to take small risks and invest. And I like that you invested in yourself first because you're like, hey, if I go make this investment and it's not right for the company, you still have probably some contacts that you met, this intellectual property and ability, this way to think. And I love that you were like, you know, I don't know what the Pakistan American dollar kind of ratio is, but you were willing to spend 10,000 nearly American dollars or over, depending on how you count it, um, to invest in your business, which is probably a ton of money in Pakistan. A lot of people probably would say, I don't have the money. I can't do it. And what they really mean is I'm afraid. And that what they really mean is I'm not committed. And I love that you go, hey, if this is what it takes, if this is where our business is going, absolutely, I'm in. I'm all in. And I, Well, not all in, but I'm starting with a... You said it was a small investment or small risk. I think to a lot of our listeners, that'd be a huge risk. Hey, spend $10,000 in this that could take your company to the next level it would have been a huge risk for me if it, if it was three or four years into my business you know like two or three years because it's been 13 years into the business and uh, it was a very measured risk for me i knew where blockchain is going and then i got this uh, so i got this huge uh, you know the program i got it for almost free because they they because being, being a pakistan entrepreneur they wanted to invite me to come 
and I, I was so humbled. I was like, I'm going to spend this and go there because I mean, they're making the effort to invest into Pakistani women, into women, especially women from South for Southeast Asia. I should make the effort to go in and learn. And that was uh, and and it was the right time because I was already reading up on it. And I was already trying to find out, you know, uh, whether or not this was uh, the right uh, time to. Uh, start uh, jumping into blockchain. So this came up and I was like, yeah, this is my call. Let's go. So that's a perfect example. A lot of people would look at you and go, well, she's lucky. She got this, you know, five or $10,000 gift, whatever their, their, their portion was uh, lucky, right? You know, she's a female. Yeah. Real lucky to be a female entrepreneur in <laughs> Pakistan. Um, but I don't know there was luck so much as she just said, I, so we, I started mentally. I'm like, okay, it started with this, this training. No, it started two years ago or three years ago when she's probably reading general industry magazines to continue her education and this blockchain technology kind of came onto her radar. She, with all of the knowledge that she didn't, because again, you're like, oh, we two or three years ago, this would have been a big risk. But I promise you, when you started, you were still investing in yourself and your company, you know, probably uh-huh. first. Yeah. It was just uh-huh. smaller money and it got bigger and bigger. So yeah. everyone out there don't go, oh, well, Shamim's, you know, she's got a 50 person company. She's been in business 10 years. She can invest in herself. I can't. No, she can invest in herself because she invested her in herself before and it may look different things. So I love that what started with, you were in the know, right? You were in a group, in a magazine, in, in an association, wherever you were on top of, hey, this, this technology exists. And then you knew the landscape well enough to say this technology of all the other new things going on, this is something I'm going to put value on. And the first Absolutely. step then wasn't to fly to San Francisco, it was to spend an hour researching and studying. And then when this opportunity comes up that a lot of people say, luck, 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 okay, sure. It was really you knowing what it was and recognizing it and putting yourself in a position where you had visibility where they could even acknowledge you, right? How many people are there in Pakistan? They picked you out of the literal millions of people and said, come get the scholarship. So I just love the whole, people see the, oh, she's in San Francisco on this beautiful, not free trip, but heavily discounted training. Um, that's, that's amazing. She's lucky, but we got to rewind it two or three or four years of her going, I'm always learning. I'm constantly on top of the stuff. I'm no, so I tell you, so when I was in San Francisco, this wasn't the only conference I was attending. There was another one Smart. after this Smart. that I was attending that I paid for fully because that was an important conference. There was in web development and front end, front end development. And we had a lot of open source technologies like Shopify and all of those guys come there. And I wanted to basically learn about uh, front end development because that's what we do very extensively, very intensely here here at home. So I did that as well. So that was a paid internship. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that this was a free, uh, free conference. The fact that this was a very good conference is why I keep bringing it up because I think those five days was, uh, was amazing. It, it, it wasn't, it was an eye opener for me. The, the amount of work being done in blockchain, because if I hadn't come to this conference, I would have never started uh, this movement in Pakistan. And right now, you know, training, we're training 100 girls in blockchain technology right here, signing an MOU with this Canada based organization. I would have never done that uh, had I not been to that, uh, you know, uh, that conference. It wasn't about just it, it being free. Yet. That was that was one of the, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, you could say the, the lucrative thing about it, but it wasn't just about it because I was going to San Francisco anyways for the other conference. And this came up and I said, okay, you know, this is like, this is God gifted. It's just so many Shamim doing the right things in the right place. And I promise you, she, she's Not done always. Well, but that's what I'm saying. She's, you've probably done 20 things that you started and invested in. And guess what? You didn't see a direct, immediate response or return, but this is one of the ones that worked out great. And the problem is you don't know which is which. So you kind of have to take all of the opportunities and yeah, maybe you strike out nine times out of 10. But if that one is the next big thing and you are the provider of this technology or, or developer of this technology in your region, how do you even put a price on that? So I just love that you just kind of get luckier and luckier. Well, but you weren't lucky. You were already going to this. You already knew what the right show was. And then you added this on and you already wore the technology. So it's just all these. I found the people that worked their tail off get really lucky all the time. And the lazy people really I'm unlucky. Not, so you know, I, I'm really, I'm really just very hardworking. I'm not lucky. You, you, you know, you play something that has that calls for luck. I'm never going to win. <laughs> I'm not lucky. I'm just the very hardworking one. All right, I'm going to say it. one more thing on the training, and then we'll move on to uh, we'll start talking about you guys and what that can look like. Uh, how 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 Shamim and her company, this technology, can can help grow your cleaning company. But what that looks like in our industry, <clears throat> and there's two parts. One, I'm going to be totally self-serving, and one, I'm not. Um, I'm talking to people about live events. 
um, which are far less than 10,000 bucks. And we, we implement the entire clean profit method. It's not even a risky thing. It's this is how you run your business. You know, I get stuff like I can't leave my business for two or three days. I can't this like, oh my gosh, it's in, you know, Phoenix or Arizona or Florida or whatever. That's a two hour plane ride. I can't do that. Shamim's like two hours. I, I laid over in North Korea or South Korea so for two hours. Thing. There's right. one thing I learned throughout 13 years that I grew because like, uh, I don't know if I told you, I grew, I, I started as a one man company, one woman company. I was going to say, who's that man? It, that's, <laughs> that's, all, that's how we do it. What I learned through these years is to delegate. It's very, very important to delegate. You know, I, I never used to do it for, the, for, for five years straight. I used to do everything myself. And then one day. What happened is I had an audit. Uh, so these uh, we were getting this ISO 9001 certification, and this auditor came in and he started talking to me. Acha, you know who does this? I do this. Who does that? I do that. Who looks after the accounts? I do. Who looks after this? I do. <laughs> who, who, who cleans? Said, who cleans the toilet? Should be I, I do I, that. I, 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 whatever it is. Exactly. And he, he went okay. So tell me this: What happens if you die? The company closed down, and I was I was so mad, and I looked at him like, "Are you crazy?" And he was like, "That's how it looks like. You don't delegate anything. You do everything yourself. Start delegating if you want this company to be an entity on its own. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to depend whether or not you are around, so that you can actually do other stuff, more creative stuff to grow the company. If you start delegating the the everyday thing. Now I took." You, you were saying I took um, 10 days off. I didn't take 10 days off. I took over five weeks. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I was I was in Seattle. I have family in Seattle. Then I came I flew, I flew to uh, San Francisco. Then um, I flew to Arizona and then back to Seattle. You came to Arizona and didn't let me take you out to, to dinner? How dare you? Now I'm offended. <laughs> Please tell me you at least were I in was, Phoenix. I was in Arizona for four days. Oh, I met... I met a lot of people though. Uh, but not but me, I was, clearly. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't know you were there. My wife I, and I, I would have taken you out to dinner. You're killing me. I, I was in Phoenix for just one day. Uh, and uh, I was in Tucson for three days and Scottsdale for a day. And then I flew back. So uh, so the reason I could do that is because I, I, I did all this in the morning. I met customers. I did my conferences. I met people, um, you know, socialized. And then at night, a couple of hours, I would talk with my team, do their daily scrums, do their daily meetings and then get some sleep. And uh, I, I did five weeks, I came back, everything, nothing broke. But if I had done this seven years ago, everything would have broken because I hadn't delegated anything. So delegation is very important. And that's the systems I'm constantly beating on is for me, you, you got to have systems. Once you have systems, then you can delegate to other people who aren't you because they've got a system to follow. So I couldn't agree more. I wanted to finish on the training thing because I was, had talked about the live event, which uh, I mean, good Lord, the live events that we put on where you put in the entire clean profit method in three days. If you can't invest a couple hundred bucks, a couple days, that's, that's nut balls. But the non-self-serving version of that, Shamim's talking about two important training events that they have. I'm guessing in technology, if you go global, there's one a day that you could say, I could be here. I could be here. Probably multiple a day. Um, the beautiful thing about our industry is there's certainly lots of smaller events, but we have the ISSA, which is our big association. They've got one big one a year. There's probably three or four you could go to. Goodness, if you're not willing to get on a plane to go to Dallas in October, and I will be there to, to see y'all, um, that's crazy. So, Again, it's it, when you can get a female in Pakistan come all the way for five weeks with 50 employees uh, running themselves. And I don't know what the flight was. I bet you she was 20, 30 hours in transit. Maybe it was only 15 hours on a plane, but it was not a, a, a It quick... was around 20, 24 hours, the whole thing. Yeah, that's... 24. Yeah, when I go to South Southeast Asia, depending on how it sorts out, it's it's a good twenty four hours, and you're in the air probably fifteen, sixteen of that. So when when we're complaining about oh I got to get on a three hour plane ride, I'm in Chicago, but you know whatever, that is insane. So I just love that. Uh, and again, I found that it's so uh, one of my favorite things is I help people in uh, Canada all, all over the world. I don't have any Pakistani clients, but it's always the same. The people that are willing to invest themselves. Well, you're not a client. I'm your client. I'm giving you money. You don't give me money. Um, <laughs> 
But it's just always the same. The people that win, the people that succeed, they work hard um, and they, they invest in themselves and their company. And if it's expensive, both emotionally, mentally, I've got to do this, I've got to get on a plane, uncomfortable, that's what they do. Hey, Cleaning Nation. As with all our guest experts, there's just too much good stuff to cram into just one show. So tune in Thursday for the second half and conclusion of Shamim Rajani's special two-part episode. We'll see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.